Hi guys, today we're going to be having a look at making a single granny square. It's one of the uh, one of the first things that a lot of people learn to make when they're learning crochet and it's a brilliant starting piece. As you can see, here's my uh, current stack of unfinished squares that are going to be made into a nice big blanket all together later on. At the moment though, we're just going to be focusing on one individual square. So that's what hopefully you'll have when we finish the tutorial video. In order to complete this particular piece you will need some yarn. I recommend if it's the first time you're doing this choosing a nice bright colour and a good quality thick yarn so that doesn't snap on you. The bright colour will enable you to see where all your individual stitches are so that can be quite helpful. You'll need some scissors, you'll be using them a lot and you'll also need a crochet hook. I recommend for your first granny square starting with a fairly large size of hook. This one is a five millimeter. Again, it makes slightly bigger stitches, just makes it a little bit easier to work with. Finally, if you have one, a yarn needle will be quite helpful for sewing at the end. Don't panic if you don't have one because you can still do it with your hook. So to begin, we will need to form a magic circle. Now I've got a tutorial video on this on my channel, but we'll go through briefly again. So, in order to form your magic circle, get a nice long tail of yarn, losing my hook there, and lay it over your hand. Separate your fourth and third fingers and wrap the yarn round once and twice. Place it on your little finger and pinch that together with your thumb. What you'll then need to do is take your crochet hook, put it through the circle, pick up the yarn, pull it through, pick up the yarn again and pull it through the little circle that you've just made. So there you can see what we've made is two rings with a little tail and the rest of your yarn here. So we're now going to do four double crochets into the middle of this ring. So take your yarn, wrap it around your little finger and pick it up with the rest of your hand. So this is the part that will allow you to tense, to add tension to the stitch. Pick it up there. So taking your hook, put it through, pick up the yarn, pull it through again, pick up the yarn and pull it through and that is your first double crochet. So hook through, pick up the yarn, hook through, pick up the yarn and all the way through those two rings. That's your second double crochet. You can see there. So hook through, pick up the yarn, hook through your third and your fourth. So one, two, three, four stitches. What you'll now need to do is pinch the first one of the stitches and have a little tug on each one of these rings and one of them will allow you to pull it through. So pull that tight and take your tail, pinch again on the first stitch and pull that through. There you have a nice little circle. So this is the basis of our granny square and into that we're then going to build the first row. So having a look at your little circle, you have one, two, three, four stitches around it. So you need to take your hook and push it through the first stitch, through two loops, let me uh, move that up to the camera a bit more for you there. Now you'll have two tails. The one that you want to pick up is the one attached to your ball of yarn. To pick it up, pull it through that double crochet and through to slip. So you've got a nice circle on your hook. You're then going to chain three. So one, two, three. So now what you have is a nice pretty magic circle attached to a chain of three. 
what we're going to do now is begin to build our granny squares. So we're going to take our hook, we're going to pick up our yarn, and we're going to pop our hook through the same stitch that we just did a chain three into. Pick up our yarn again and pull that through so there are three loops on your hook. Pick up your yarn again, pull it through the first two. Make sure that this stays tight. Pick up your yarn and pull it through the second two. And you're going to do the same thing again. Pick up your yarn, push it through, pick up the yarn, pull it through, then hook over once and twice. So there you go. What you need to do now from this loop is chain three. One, two, three. You're then going to take your hook and this time you're going to put it through the next stitch along. So yarn over, hook through the next stitch, pick up your yarn again and pull it through. So you see you've got three, three pieces of yarn over the hook. Hook the next piece of yarn, pull it through the first two. Make sure that's tight using this finger. Pick up the yarn again and pull it through. Same thing. It's through the same stitch. There's a second stitch through your second ring on the circle. Pick up the yarn, pull it through. Pick up the yarn, pull it through. And the final and third one through this hole. Yarn over, yarn over, three, through the first two, and through the second two. And what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this two more times so that we end up with the basic square shape of our granny square. So chain three, one, two, three. Pick up your yarn. And we're going to go through the next stitch along now, pop it through, yarn over, pull through again. So you see, once again, three on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So two more, now two more double crochets need to go into this little hole. And the last one through that hole. So as you can see, it's actually starting to take the shape of your granny square now. So chain three again, one, two, three. Yarn over. Through the next stitch. Pull up through the first two and through the second two. Got two more double crochets to go into the same hole. And remember, if this is going too quickly for you, just pause the video, see if you can work it out, go back. If some of the basic stitches are causing you trouble, there are tutorials on my website, uh, lucykatecrochet.com, where you can go through some of the basics and then come back again. So, here is the basis of your granny square. Now what we have to do is obviously join this loose end to the main part of the pattern. So as you can see we have our original chain here. So that a bit closer to the camera for you. We have our original chain and we have our first two stitches that we did. Now what we need to do is get the top rung of that chain. So if we count from the end of that second double crochet, one, two, three, it's this little loop here that we need to put our stitch through. Now this can be a little bit fiddly, so don't worry if you need to give it a little tug and loosen it up. So you pop your hook through there. Take your yarn and pull it through both of those loops. And now you need to finish this row. So you're going to get your scissors Cut yourself a tail, don't leave it too short because you'll need to tuck it in later and pull the yarn through and pull that tight into a knot. So there we go, the basic part of your 
granny square is here. What we're going to do now is add the next row on. Now that will show you how the pattern continues because it just follows the same way as it grows, adding in just a couple of additional stitches each time. So there's where we are now. So when I add in the next row, I like to start from where I finished off because it allows me to neatly tuck in this string here. So getting your yarn back over your hand again, we're going to knot the yarn onto the hook. So yarn over your hand. two loops over your finger, back loop over front, back loop over front and pull tight. If you look at my how to uh, make a chain tutorial, we'll go through that again if, if that's not one you're familiar with, and pull. So now your yarn is essentially slip knotted onto your hook. So taking our work, we're going to pop our hook through the big hole and pull our yarn through. Now, there's a lot of tails here, it's easy to get in the muddle. These are the two that are coming from the knot on your hook. I'm going to bring them over the top and you're going to pick both of them up with your hook and bring them through. So it will look like there are three stitches along your hook. One, two, three. Now just pick up the yarn that is attached to your ball of yarn, pick up and pull through those first two, pick up and pull through the second two, and now you just want to do a chain one for that first one. This will give you an appropriate length as you continue. Now what you need to do, you've got these two little tails here from before, and you need to, as you're going round, just try and stitch them into your pattern. So, yarn over, hook through, pull it up, and you're going to do two double crochets. So one, yarn over, through the hole, pick it up, three lines there, one, two. You're now going to chain three to build the corner of the square. One, two, three three, yarn over again and go into the same hole and do three more double crochets into that corner. There we go, what we've done is made the next corner. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add an additional hole in the middle that will allow us to grow our work. So all you need to do now is chain one. So we don't chain three this time, we just chain one. Then yarn over and into the next corner along. And we're gonna do three double crochets. So continuing that pattern that we started at the beginning. It's really important to use your left hand to keep these stitches nice and tight so that you get a nice consistent work when it's finished. So again, to create a corner, chain three, one, two, three, yarn over, and three more double crochets into the same corner. So now we're increasing the length of the side. We only need to do one double crochet, and we're gonna do a repeat of the pattern into the next two corners. So follow along with me, or if you're uh, struggling to keep up a little bit, just pause and then continue the video when you're ready. So one, two, three. Chain three for the corner of the square. And three more to build that corner. So, growing the length again, so we're just going to chain one. Sorry, just knocked my tripod, that wasn't very clever. And the final corner, we're going to do 
another three double crochets. Another, excuse me, just bringing my yarn into the picture. Another three for the corner. One, two, three. And three double crochets here. Now, the beauty of the granny square is essentially, now you just repeat ad infinitum in order to get the size of square that you want. So, just to uh, remind you from the last time, to attach them together, you find the top of that chain three that you did at the beginning, pop your hook through. Now you are trying to hook through the top two the top V, you can see that, oh, there we go, that whole little V in order to uh, secure it nicely together. It's a, a fiddly old job with some of these. Let me pop that through there. My goodness. This is what happens when you make your stitches slightly too small and then can't get your hook through later on. It's not very clever, really. Right, hook through again. There we go. Right, drop to stitch. It's actually quite useful to see what happens when you drop a stitch. Um, one of the nice things about crochet, and occasionally one of the irritating things, is that you can drop stitches. Don't worry if you do. Look, it's just gone slightly backwards in the pattern, so I just pick up my chain one again. And uh, plug on with attaching these together. There we go, lovely, right. So it's popped through that little V, yarn over, pull through, and then pull that hoop through there. Now, I'm gonna cut off the extra yarn, leaving a nice little tail that we can work into the piece, pull through, and tighten. So there we go, so the story so far, we have made a nice symmetrical little square. Right, so I'm just going to do one more layer now, just so that I can then just confirm how the pattern works for you, and we can have a look at sewing the ends in afterwards. So, working with me if you will, little slip knot, onto your hook, pop, pop it tight, we're then going to pull the tail and the yarn all the way through, and we're going to sew them both in for the first stitch, I just like it because it looks a little bit more like the double crochet when it comes through. So, three lines on there, pull it through once, pull it through twice, and a single chain to get the length up. Got your little tails here, so we're going to work them into the pattern as well as we can at this point. Yarn over, through that hole and two double crochets is the only one we do two into, over and through. Now, we are at one of the sides, joining up to an edge. We only do a chain three for an edge, so for a side we're going to chain just one, and then we're going to do three into the corner. One, two, three. And then we're going to chain three to make it look like a square, and another three to complete the corner. And then look, we're back at an edge again, so we just need to chain one. And now, to do this middle part of the square, we only put one, two, three stitches in. So you see we only double up and increase the chain to form the corners of our square. If you put too many into this bit you'll end up with a rather odd shape that isn't square at all. So another chain one and build this corner. And chain one, two, Three, and complete the side. I talked uh, a little bit at the beginning about which yarn to use if you're a beginner. 
if you are just starting out with crochet it can be tempting to uh, to just buy the cheapest yarn in the colour that you like the most and it's certainly what I did at the beginning and the problem with making blankets out of cheap yarn is that they can snap uh, now I don't know obviously what you're going to use your blanket for but for me they get used by small children they get used by my two-year-old daughter or my uh, sister's numerous uh, young children and if they get tugged and played with and carried around as, as, as loved things do they uh, they snap if you use too cheap a yarn so if you're planning on making it as a, as a functional piece not just a decorative piece do do invest a couple more pounds in a yarn that's nice and strong I'm quite a fan at the moment of this uh, Women's Institute brand that I'm using um, this one's called Smooth and Silky I think the uh, the only problem that I'm having with this is that it's um, it's a little bit slippery so uh, perhaps not a not one labelled as silky if it's your first go because I find it sort of slips up my left hand and it can loosen a couple of the stitches but um, that's uh, a very much a personal preference thing but uh, a main consideration as well is to use a nice bright colour if you use a colour that's uh, that's very dark I'm quite a fan of dark purples and blacks they can look gorgeous when it's finished but you find it very difficult to see your stitches if you're working a more complicated um, part of the piece so uh, bright colours to begin with okay so the final example of finishing off a square because this is uh, a bit that's quite tricky to see on the screen so let's just show you one more time so you have here your initial two double crochets attached to a chain the top of the chain one two three stitches in makes ooh, off screen makes a little V and you want to go through both parts of this V with your hook so push your hook through and pick it up so you should have two on the top and one underneath we hope there we go so two parts on the top and there's one part underneath that you probably can't see on the screen what we're going to do is take our yarn and pull it through she says confidently and then we're going to take the front loop and pull it through the back loop and then we're going to tie off a snip there and tie that off so there we go right this is a simple granny square if you want to make a nice big beautiful granny square blanket then all you do is keep continuing in the same manner so this is an example of a larger size of granny square and here is an example of a almost finished big granny square blanket so as you can see you don't have to stay with just one colour you can make lots of different colours around it um, I'm edging this off with a darker one for comparison so there we go right so the final part is just to tie in those loose ends, so let me grab a bigger example so it's a bit easier for you to see. So lots of loose straggly ends, there are two ways of um, neatly putting them into your piece. One is to use your crochet hook and that is a lot of the time what I do. You simply take your hook and you pull it through at least four times backwards and forwards through the piece. So let's have a look at this one here. So I pop my hook through in a nearby stitch, pick up the yarn, pull it through, hook through the other side, pick up the yarn, pull it through, hook through the other side, pick up the yarn, pull it through, and again. Uh, the more times you do this through, the, uh, the more secure your stitch will be and the less likely you'll be to get straggly ends and then all you do is just snip off the exposed part. The other way that you can attach them to your piece is using a yarn needle. This isn't actually a yarn needle, mine snapped the other day, but um, this is a, this is a, a close approximation of a yarn needle um, and it fits yarn through it. So There we go, so you pop it through the needle and then simply sew it into the piece 
if you're handy with sewing, this is probably a quicker way of doing it. Pull that through. There you go, so rather than going in and out and in and out, I've just gone all the way through with the needle. And take your scissors again and snip off the loose end. So there you go. When you're finished, hopefully you'll end up with something a bit like this. I um, hope you found that useful. If you'd like to find out more about granny squares and different styles of them, then you can check out my website, lucycakecrochet.com, and we'll have some more videos and articles up soon.